What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of BS Build. In today's episode, we're in the shop. You know what that means. I am here working on my yet to be named single seater futuristic cyber rod. Take that name to the bank or to the lawyers, whatever one you choose, I don't know. In today's episode, I got a bunch of fresh steel in and I'm ready to start building. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is building out the caging uh, and like basically the safety stuff for the cockpit, for the driver. I'll show you guys how I'm gonna make this thing not a death trap if it happens to flip over. It's a roll cage to protect the driver and then the kind of like a bottom cage or base cage that the driver actually sits in because unlike a traditional frame, obviously this is a single seater car, so the driver sits in between the two frame rails instead of on top of them. So then you gotta build something underneath to house the driver. So, this is gonna be fun, stay tuned. Before we get down to work, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Simply Safe. Simply Safe is incredibly effective, reliable home security that will make sure your home is safe. You can order it on the phone or online, it'll be delivered right to your door, and you can set it up yourself at home in under an hour. It's very simple, you just stick the sensors right where you need them, and from there, your home is monitored 24 seven, and if there is any type of problem, they will alert the police. And they've got sensors for every room and door, and plus lots of great sensors like water sensors, temp sensors, HD cameras. It's really easy to use and you've got around the clock protection for just 50 cents a day with no contracts. We use Simply Safe here at the shop. I've been using it in my house for over a year now. You guys know that we have a lot of valuables around, so I was really interested in a very simplistic, easy to use, easy to install, and easy to maintain security system where I didn't have to just jam a bunch of holes in all the walls and run a bunch of crazy wires. And that's why I chose Simply Safe because it's so, well, it's in the name, it's simple. <laughs> And the setup process really couldn't be easier. I was completely done in less than 30 minutes and you just basically unbox everything, choose your sensors, stick them on where you want them, sync them up with the base station and you're good to go. And literally anybody can handle this. So in the shop, we have our cameras, our HD cameras. We have one here and we have a couple that point outside to monitor our cars. We have glass brake sensors on our windows. We have door sensors on our doors over here. And right here is our little home base keypad where we enter in codes. And then my favorite thing is our automatic lock. This thing's really cool. If I wanna let a guest into the shop I can dial in on the app online and unlock this door but when I'm heading out from the shop I just tap this it arms the alarm system and locks my door for me and when I show up in the morning I just hit my code enter it in and it'll open my door for me it's very handy so if you guys are interested in protecting your home or your office or your your garage your hut where you build cars check out the link in the description below or go to simplysafe.com slash b is for build to learn more thanks to simply safe for sponsoring this episode now let's get down to work all right, before I start building this stuff, I need to set my model to be a little bit more correct. I'll show you what that means in a second. We gotta jump into the computer to do it. And my computer's gone. There we go, that looks better. Now, let me jump you into the computer. All right, so getting started, let me show you the first problem that we have here. So as you can see, once I lay down a ground plane, ground plane, and once I, once I emulate something that's ground, you can tell that we don't have any ground clearance at all. So we gotta fix that, because that relates to our overall frame rail height as well. Now one of the cool things though, is that these guys right here, these over fenders for the front wheels, they are independent of the frame. So we can keep these guys low, very, very low to the ground, just so the front can get over small bumps, or you know speed bumps and things like that. These can stay really low to the ground um, and keep that low effect. And we can do that in the front, and we can emulate something like that in the back as well. But the midsection of this guy, this, and this and the rest of my body panels going up and my frame need to move up. So that's what I'm gonna work on figuring out now. All right, so I jumped in here and I moved the front fenders actually the correct way and brought those down a little bit to gain some body height. And then the back, I kind of fudged it a little bit because the actual modeling of this is gonna take a while and I didn't wanna do it right now. Uh, but you can see that now we have some ground clearance. I measured out three inches of ground clearance. My GTR is the lowest car I have. It has two and a half inches of ground clearance right in the rear um, and three in other spots. My Huracan's got like four inches of ground clearance. I figured three will probably be fine for this car. But since it does have such a large wheelbase, it's going to be, it'll still be a little bit sketchy, but at least now it'll be able to drive. Uh, so we're making this a little bit more realistic, which now changes the measurement of our frame rail versus the ground, which we were measuring in the last episode. So if I go in here, I go tools, I go measure distance, and we look at the top of the frame rail down to the ground, 
Now we're at 21.8 inches. So we're basically at 22 inches. Um, so that's getting us, you know, now actually the car's a lot closer to where it really needs to be. Uh, I think we were at 22 inches when we had weight on it. Let me double check. So I just went and checked with the car, I measured it, and when you put weight onto the chassis, like the expected weight of the engine and the transmission, we are 22 inches off the ground, which is perfect, and now we're matching up with the design, which is great. So now we added a little bit of ride height into the vehicle, so it'll actually work like a vehicle, uh, not like some sort of uh, video game. Um, we know our frame height, and now we can start building some of these other things off of that, because uh, this is a really important piece that I'm going to introduce you guys today, and this is the kind of main structure behind the roll cage. Although I haven't done the best job of hiding it here in the modeling, you can see it kind of sticking out here and here. Um, I'll bring that down a little bit. This is uh, supposed to be a hidden roll cage that hides underneath the body and it kind of runs the skeletal frame of this side, this side angle right here. Then it comes up behind the driver's head. And this is a really important piece because it does a lot of things. It helps if we are to get in a front end accident and we scoop kind of under a car. If the front of this car goes, this will help lead that vehicle up onto the front of my car in a way that it won't hit me in the head and it also does some amazing stuff for a rollover check this out let me bring the ground back so the green part is the ground and let me grab my car here and we're gonna roll it over so let me show you what happens in the event now of a rollover if you had a rollover that was really bad and we're at this angle um you can see with the front down here my head is barely getting pushed down just a little bit. It's not that bad. Now it's resting on the front and then our roll cage point right here. Now that shouldn't happen because the engine and the trans is all back here and that's the heavy part of the vehicle. So it should always outweigh and I'm going to build my spoiler so it's somewhat of a crunchy crunchy point. So if this is the pivot point right here, it should always outweigh the rest of this front stuff and it should push the vehicle down a little bit more to be something like this which is a lot better situation or scenario. Gives me room to climb out. I've measured this distance right here. It's enough room to climb out of the vehicle. I thought about maybe making a breakaway floorboard, so if I wanted to climb out towards the sky, that might be possible too. But anyways, gives me a way to climb out, and the vehicle at any point, if it does roll over, should rest at this angle. But if something else did make it rest at the other angle, something like that, um, at least my head's not destroyed. So that's great. Safety first. So this roll cage bar actually connects up with the frame rail in multiple different spots to help brace itself and the rail and then they connect to each other um, on the top right here. So this one uh, joins up with this one right here and that's where they come together and then they'll have offshoots that go down to the frame rail as well. So that's one of the things that we're gonna be building today that's already kind of designed out for us but I need to make sure that I'm doing this with some straight angles because you can see there's kind of a bend in it here. Um, that was from our last kind of more fluid design. So I'm going to redesign this with some straighter angles that we can actually measure and create on the tubing bender. So the upper roll cage is one thing that we need to develop, but then also there is a lower section that needs to be developed as well. If anything goes under the car, this is to like help protect me, but also it's just my cabin, right? It's my cockpit. So this thing that I've highlighted right here is a thing that runs underneath the car along the frame rails and joins up in the front here. And I need to go ahead and box rail this out so I can build it all out with rails and support it. And then we can you know, plate it later on. So I'm going to go ahead and design that out right now just using this uh, tubing that we have here in the shop. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, design how that needs to be built, where it connects up with the frame rail, and then we'll have all of our reference points. So I'm going to start designing that out.
All right, so here's the body as you guys are used to seeing it. And uh, this is kind of cool. I select the whole body, I hide it, and boom, you see all the race car, roll cage, frame structure stuff underneath. So all this roll caging is gonna do two things. One is it's gonna keep me safe, but two is it's gonna add a lot of rigidity to this car because with the length that it is, this is a whole lot of frame rail between wheel over here and wheel up here to support the rest of the car in the middle. So this will all help keep it structurally sound, supported all the way through. We may do more stuff back here or around the engine bay. I'm not sure yet. And then down here, some of this stuff is a little light. Like we could do crossbars, but you can see we're only doing one angle. And that's to help cut down on weight originally. And if we need to add more, I know we're gonna need to add some more supports um, across the bottom so when we look at the bottom that engine is going to need a couple more supports going across here for the engine mounts and i might need some more for my butt and we're not really sure but I, i'll add supports you know as we see fit but uh this is really cool now like i said that took a long time to do just in the computer so i don't know how long it's going to take us to build all this but the great thing is, is now we have like measurements for every piece. I just pop in here oh that's 92 inches okay you know we can start cutting pretty quickly so maybe we should start cutting. Sounds like Oscar started cutting. Uh, actually, before we start cutting metal, we gotta get the car set up right, so let me show you through that. This is all pretty simple. We have the wrong wheels and tires on here. They're much smaller than the ones that we're gonna use overall, so that actually lowers the vehicle down a little bit. So we need to put the right wheels and tires on here, which I can do now, because I have adapter plates. So we're gonna put the right wheels and tires on here, and then prepare to lower the car back down to the setting that we had it in the software, which is, if you guys remember, top of that frame rail right there, 22 inches off the ground. We got our actual wheels on here and I got the frame rails set at the right height. So these are 22 inches off the floor from the top to the floor. Uh, I wanna mention a couple things. These are the wheels that we're gonna use, but the tires, we're not gonna use these tires. We got a Nitto performance tire that we're gonna wrap on here. It's a little bit smaller, so that'll lower it down a little bit more. Pulled out the suspension, so for the time being that this will just sit uh, at the right height. But I did talk with BC Racing and they are gonna help work with me to develop a coil that we can utilize on this car that's gonna be just a little bit shorter package. We just need a little bit shorter one and we're gonna be super good. So I wanna hold this at exactly this height. I'm gonna weld in some supports that are gonna basically support the frame right off the ground. So this is a four inch tall piece of rail. Uh, so we're gonna cut an 18 inch tall piece of metal that's gonna be welded onto here and go down to the floor. I'll do one for here, one for here, and that will hold the front of this exactly 22 inches tall. Two pieces of scrap metal, cut them to length, and went ahead and tack welded them in there. This is all temporary. Actually, this whole part of the car from here forward gets cut off anyways, and we have to rebuild it as more of a crash structure to be able to take a front impact. So that is setting the ride height correctly in the front now, and that's all great. Moving on to the back, we're actually too low now. We're like 21 inches in the back, uh, but we don't have our wheels on here. So we're gonna go ahead and get the wheels on here, see what we can do, see if we need to remove the suspension or what we gotta do, and we'll get this ride height set in the back. Got the back lower down to the right size. Same exact stuff, just a different side. So the next piece that I'm gonna go ahead and start building is the bottom of, what, what we call this, the driver's box? The bottom, I don't know, the bottom of the car? The piece that goes down from here and sits three inches off the ground and runs the whole dis uh, distance of this. It mirrors these frame rails. Why am I having trouble talking? It mirrors these frame rails, and I thought of a really cool thing that I could 3D print that would save me a bunch of time on making these things really accurate. So let's jump into that computer real quick and 3D print something up. Just need like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just eight of them, eight, eight small pieces. I 
I'm done with my little 3D printing project. So these are tubing holders. They're two inches wide, so they set right on our frame rail, exactly two inches, so they set right on the center of it. And then the tube rests on there and will be centered. So now all I gotta do is put those in the right spot. When I put my tube on it, it'll measure, or it'll mirror these frame rails exactly. So the next thing we gotta do is cut up some tube. We got four to cut. We got one long one there, there, and then another one here and here that are supposed to overrun by about six inches. got all the tubing cut up and you can see it's on my little plastic 3d printed spacer dealies here so we're, we're perfectly mirroring the frame uh, we had a 10 degree angle here and then I don't know I did a bunch of math and craziness to make this thing and make that all line up there honestly don't even know how I did it so next thing I got to do is I'm gonna bevel all these edges so they can uh, have a little bit more room for welding to go in there and then we'll start to weld this thing up the lower basic frame structure all welded out now this is almost ready to be dropped down underneath and attached with the vertical pieces but before we do that we have some horizontal supports that are going to come in here there is a plan overall for three one in the back one in the middle and one right here but I'm gonna leave out the middle one for now because we may be able to place that a little bit more strategically when we know where our engine is gonna land so for now I'm just gonna do one in the back and one in the middle so what I need to do is cut a piece of tubing exactly this width and then notch it out so it wraps around here and to do that we need to assemble our Versa Notcher. Aha! So this bad boy is the Versa Notcher. It's made by the guys at Rogue Fabrication. Their website is roguefab.com. They are the same people that make this really badass tubing bender as well that you see us use on our builds. This thing is super awesome. And uh, they hooked us up with one more of their awesome products. This is called a Versa Notcher, and it can do a lot of great different notching on your tubes. And it has, this is really cool, just a quick set, it's a little hard to see right there, of the different degrees. So you just lift this up, move it, set the degree that you need, and then put it back in so if you're in the market for a notcher this is a really really great option so check it out i'll put a link in the description and it's called a versa notcher so uh all we have to do is we don't actually have to cut the tube because um the notch if we take the notch directly out of the center will actually cut the tube for us so i'm just going to measure my width from side to side and then we'll do our two notches and that will end us up with the tube that's the right length as well Some learnings on the first time using this. They do sell three inch deep drill bits. Uh, get one of those. And then, boom, look at this. Notched here, 90 degrees, and then took 10 degrees off, so it's an 80 degree here. It fits perfectly in between. So now I just gotta cut one more that we're gonna go ahead and put back here, and we'll be ready to weld those in. Got the rear piece notched up and it fits in here perfectly. Now it's not gonna live here, it's actually gonna live back here. But before I can place it here and weld it in, we need to go ahead and start working on the uprights. So this obviously lives underneath the car down here and there are gonna be uprights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven uprights are gonna um, hold this thing vertically uh, that go straight off of this up to the bottom of this frame section. So since this is the back, it actually needs to be cut at a 45 like this and then our upright will be cut at a 45 as well and come at a 90 degree angle straight up into our frame so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this rear section up make sure it's exactly square and then cut two uprights and get that ready
got the back uprights cut and then I got this tube notched out at a 45. Yes, this is something I could have done in the bandsaw, but I just did not think about it. So these will join up like this and get welded in at a 90 degree angle. And then the bottom of this connects down here. So you can see, yeah, not a lot of ground clearance, but anyways, um, that's all good like that. So the next thing that I wanna go ahead and do is cut the uprights that are gonna go right here. So there's an upright that goes here and here and those just kinda of go straight up. So what I gotta do is notch the tube and then measure everything so it's the exact same height as that piece over there. And then we can have that ready and then we should be ready to kinda of weld this lower structure in place. Uh, I need to have it under the car actually to do the measurements for these uprights that are a lot more tricky because they come at an angle. <laughs> Okay, I got my four supports uh, cut and I got Oscar here with me. He's gonna help me get these things tacked in here. It's gonna be pretty technical because we gotta build these things square to the frame so they're going straight up from the frame, 90 degrees this way, but then also level to the world so they're going straight up and down as well. So we'll go ahead and get those all set and tacked in. Cool, we got all four of these uh, uprights tacked in here. They are exactly up and, and right. Uh, now, uh, next thing is these, before we drop this whole thing down, I need to get these center support bars in here, but you guys remember they're coped for this angle and then this angle. Now we gotta get this angle, the notch in it as well. And then in the back here, it's now a 45. So there's a little bit of doing too. So I gotta just get tricky with the tubing notcher, but it'll make the job easy. And then I'll get those supports in there, get them tacked in, and we'll be ready to drop this thing down underneath the car where it belongs. Got the cross sections welded in, all coped up and welded in, or the tack welded in. And uh, now we're ready to take this lower section of the frame and get it under the car. So I'm gonna clean stuff out and uh, get it down, get it aligned, and then use a jack to start to press it up. Oh, also, um, since there is a strip of weld right here, it has a slight kind of you know bump to it. I gotta go ahead and sand that off of the bottom so it's perfectly flat. So this perfectly flat piece will um, butt right up to it nicely. We got the lower frame placed in and it looks awesome. It's fitting up perfectly. It's exactly where I want it. Everything's aligning with where it needs to go. So it's ready to be welded in. And if you guys are wondering, uh, every measurement is made off of the bottom or the top, but normally the bottom of the frame rail uh, relative to kind of the bottom of that. So the differences in the height of the ground don't change the difference, make sure everything's still level, if that makes any sense. So it's great. It's ready to be welded in. Got the bottom frame welded in. So this is awesome. I'm really excited about this. Now there's a lot more cross supports and just supports that have to go into here, but I'm trying to get the outline of the base frame. We're running a little bit low on steel. So uh, I'm just gonna keep working on, the next piece is, is a little bit harder. So these all kind of angle back. So they angle back from here. So I gotta get, I'm gonna build this piece and that piece over there so I can weld them up to the frame here. So they start here and angle back to the frame over there. I gotta get them cut up and then we'll get them tack welded in.
Got those two uprights in there with their slanting back uh, style, and then one more goes in the front here. But with the way they slant back, it made it a little bit more tricky, but nothing too hard, and got them in there, and they fit up nicely. So um, this isn't fully welded out. It's tack welded in case we run into any problems, anything needs to be changed. And again, this is just the bare bones structure of this bottom thing. It looks a little sparse right now because we still have to put another upright in here, more supports in here for the engine, all the cross supporting in this thing. There's gotta be a ton of cross supporting in this thing that you saw in the designs. That's all soon to come, but for now, I wanna keep working on the kind of the main shape of the frame before we spend a bunch of time supporting throughout. So it's time to start moving on to the top part of the cage that's really gonna protect me from, well, stuff that comes from the top. Hey, what's up guys? It's Chris from the Editing Dungeon. Uh, I am editing this video and realizing it's getting very, very long. I actually worked for two weeks on this stuff uh, in the background and it came out to be a lot of stuff to show. So I'm gonna split this into two parts. Uh, first part right now, next part will come out tomorrow at the same time. And if you're watching this in the future, it's already out, just go check the playlist. So thank you guys so much for watching this part. I hope you tune in for tomorrow's part and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. Come, come, come on.